Hi, I'm Kerry and I'm going to be talking about Shakespeare's The Tempest. Prospero's final speech, now all my charms are overthrown, closes The Tempest. It ends it on a really nice note and a note that just ties everything up really nicely. Nothing is ended feeling like anything is off or out of place. It's all completely balanced and it's quite a cathartic speech for the audience. There's a lot of things put on the table, there is forgiveness asked for, and it's a satisfying ending. No one's leaving feeling dissatisfied. So this speech starts by breaking the fourth wall. The whole play goes on and on and on. It's all happened in front of the audience and not referred to the audience. Whereas now Prospero looks at them with direct address. Now all my charms are overthrown and what strength I have's mine own, which is most faint. Now it is true, I must be here confined by you. So the audience has confined him and he feels trapped by the audience. The audience are who's keeping him on stage and why he is there looking at them. He says that his charms have been overthrown. So he's relying on his human skills now, not as much magic. It's more the skills we all have as humans, that is emotion and communication, not looking at the magic books that he's referred to all the way through the play. Also, I'd like to note that um, this was my old exam version of The Tempest. I've loved this play for years. And so it was actually quite nice to get it back out. And past Kerry has done me an absolute solid. So this speech works with rhyming couplets, but release me from my bands with the help of your good hands, gentle breath of yours, my sails, must fill or else my project fails. It play, it's pleasing to the ear and it's nice to listen to. The audience can leave remembering it. It's nice to hear. And that's why we remember songs and poetry because when it rhymes, the ear likes it. It's not jarring. And it emphasizes the tying up of the story. So when the audience leave, they don't remember they don't remember all the bad stuff Prospero's done all the way through. They tend to remember this. They'll remember this final speech and the story is tied up in a nice bow. Gentle breath of yours, my sails must fill. The applause through the metaphor of the ship. The tempest starts with the shipwreck and the metaphor is continued all the way through down to the end. And it's once again, it's that nice bow tying it all up. The gentle breath is the applause. He's saying that if you don't fill my sails, we can't move on from this, we must stay. It's the idea of confinement again. And he says he'll fail unless he gets the applause or else my project fails, which was to please. This is almost Shakespeare talking now. He wants to please the audience. If he doesn't please them with his plays, then what was the point of them? He's failed with it. Again, it's that direct address. He's asking the audience to applaud him or else the whole play was a failure. It's not entirely Prospero talking now. It's a little bit of both. Prospero is saying, forgive me, and Shakespeare saying, please clap me, tell me this was good, tell me I did good, basically. Let your indulgence set me three. It's quite cheeky. He can't end it without applause. Any play must end with applause. It's the signaling for the end, the lights can come up, people can leave. This is almost saying that he can't be freed without that applause. And some academics think that this was Shakespeare's swan song play, his final play. And if it is his final play, then this final speech is definitely more Shakespeare talking than Prospero. Shakespeare is there saying, this is my final hurrah and I'll be trapped without the applause. I want to be appreciated. Let's be real, who does not? The morals and ethics of this is forgiveness and they go back 2000 years. It's things we can still listen to now and we understand what he's saying. We understand that that feeling of not wanting to move on until you have forgiveness from someone or the permission to move on. So one part of this speech, unless I be relieved by prayer, there was deep, deep religion at this point in time. And once again, it's the idea that religion teaches forgiveness we cannot be relieved unless you forgive unless you pray for this and it's this belief in forgiveness and salvation that prospero wants this can be translated to any culture language religion which is really nice when you get projects like the globe to globe project that happened in london a few years ago and lots of different Shakespeare plays were put on in lots of different languages. And you'll find that if you watch any of those, even if you don't speak the language, you can tend to pick up what's going on and you tend to understand without knowing the language and sometimes even, even knowing the play, you can still pick things up. 
Thank you so much to Play by Play for giving me this chance to talk about The Tempest. Um, I got to do this last year as well and I really enjoyed it. So thank you to Mary and to Carolyn for that. Now my charms are all o'erthrown and what strength I have's mine own which is most faint. Now, tis true, I must be here confined by you or sent to Naples. But let me not, since I have my dukedom got and pardoned the deceiver, dwell in this bare island by your spell, but release me from my bonds with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours my sails must fill or else project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardoned be, Let your indulgence set me free.